always a pleasure to see you, Your Royal Highness, and it's an honor to speak with you today. His Royal Highness Sultan Nazrin Shah is the Deputy King of Malaysia and ruler of the state of Perak, the descendant of a dynasty dating back to 1528. The Sultan is known as a friend of intellectuals and for having a strong appetite for knowledge. As an economist, his research interests cover a wide range of issues, including constitutional monarchy, ethno-religious relations, socio-economic development, and the 20th century economy of, of Malaysia, which marked his postdoctoral studies at Harvard University. His Royal Highness is Chancellor of Malaysia's oldest university, the University of Malaya. Uh, he's also an honorary fellow of Worcester College in Oxford, Magdalen College and St. Edmund's College in Cambridge, and the Vice Chair of the Oxford Centre for Islamic Studies. The Sultan patrons the Institute of Diplomacy and Foreign Relations of Malaysia, the Malaysia International Islamic Financial Centre, and the Oxford ASEAN Institute, amongst a number of important institutions in Asia and Europe. Throughout His Royal Highness's decorated life journey, the Sultan was Malaysia's special envoy for interfaith and inter-civilizational dialogue at the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations and the Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment of the Royal Engineers and the Royal Medical Corps in the Malaysian Armed Forces. In recognition of his contributions to humanitarian causes, the UN Secretary General appointed His Royal Highness as the co-chair of the High-Level Panel on Humanitarian Financing, which uh, I had the pleasure and honor of serving on. His Royal Highness is the author of a number of books, including Earlier 20th Century Malaya and Contemporary Malaysian Contrasts, Striving for Inclusive Development from Angkor to a Modern Malaysia State, and The Monarchy in Contemporary uh, Malaysia. So Your Royal Highness, as you know, uh, I've been an advocate of good governance uh, for a number of years, uh, initially, of course, with the private sector, but of course, see it now also as a massive enabler to, to generate a multiplier effect on impact also within the nonprofit and the charitable sector. Uh, you are, of course, a global anchor uh, and a renowned advocate of good governance uh, and often call on institutions in Malaysia and elsewhere across Asia to leverage innovative methods to maximize the social impact uh, with the rapidly growing wealth across the continent. How crucial and perhaps urgent do you think uh, it is to improve governance when it comes to managing the flow of philanthropic capital? And what can be done to accelerate this cultural shift when it comes to deployment of this massive pool of capital? I've always believed that good governance is absolutely paramount in these matters. And it is something I've spoken about many times as, as, as you've, you've uh, mentioned. To put it in very simple terms, civilization falls when governance fails. And in this regard, fighting corruption in all its manifestations is a duty that falls to all of us. And we must use all of the innovative tools at our disposal to eradicate this scourge. I believe that transparency accountability and justice must guide our day-to-day -day interactions at work and across all sectors. We are living in an era of massive wealth generation, and that presents a really exciting opportunity for the region, for Southeast Asia. But it comes with an increasingly daunting and urgent responsibility to make sure that we can utilize these growing opportunities and these philanthropic capital flows in the best possible way. To do that, we need to harness available technologies, work collaboratively, and form productive partnerships with the right stakeholders from Asia and around the world. Yes. So Your Royal Highness, you, you mentioned, of course, uh, Islamic almsgiving, and I'd really like to seek uh, your thoughts on, on Islamic giving in general, as well as, of course, through a local Malaysian lens. Uh, sure. As you know, sir, anywhere uh, between 400 billion to a trillion dollars a year is donated by Muslims around the world through zakat, uh, which, of course, is compulsory almsgiving, and sadaqah, 
uh, discretionary mm -hmm. almsgiving every single year. Yet mm -hmm. one in three Muslims around the world lives under the poverty line, which is staggering. Yeah. How can we better harness uh, and empower Islamic giving in a more strategic and coordinated way with a view to maximizing philanthropic impact? And how effective has the experience in Malaysia been through things like, of course, the state-run zakat collection centers, but other initiatives as well? Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, for the benefit of our uh, non-Muslim friends, uh, I think it's very important to clarify um, at the outset that zakat refers to the obligatory tax for Muslims uh, to achieve social justice through the distribution of, of wealth, whereas sadaka is charity or voluntary alms giving. Um, so I think that those two distinctions uh, need, need to be kept in mind uh, when we talk about Muslim uh, charity. Yeah? I think the first point to note is that um, global giving uh, using technology can harness the power of sadaka already witnessed in many examples around the world. For example, in Southeast Asia, we have a platform called Ethis, which is, um, has grown tremendously over, over recent years. Uh, this platform, for example, has seen the development and sponsored uh, projects from low-cost housing um, to um, agriculture and to tourism. I'm also aware, Bada, that you yourself um, have been um, uh, involved in the establishment of Hasana, uh, which, which is uh, um, uh, based in, in your part of the world, but has a, a global reach. Um, so platforms like, like, like Ethis and Hasana, and also those created by the UNHCR and other international organizations, I noticed both Islamic and non-Islamic, now feature zakat calculators, for example, that allow Muslims to channel their obligatory zakat through these means. And I think that, that, that's very, very exciting. In Malaysia, um, online and uh, digital transfer of zakat is very much embedded uh, in our zakat institutions. One example um, is the Maybank Islamic Mosque Adoption Program, which basically aims to ensure transparency of giving through technology and the QR codes, for example. You know? So I recently launched this initiative in Malaysia and witnessed firsthand the handout of a number of contributions uh, through, through this program. So Malaysia is fortunate in that its zakat institutions and are well established and has embraced technology to reach zakat contributors. What needs to be done and what needs to improve at our end is to use the same means to reach its recipients more widely and to utilize technology to monitor progress and capacity development among zakat recipients. It is worthwhile mentioning at this point that when we talk about uh, 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 local, uh, global uh, giving, the agreement on global zakat standards and distribution is absolutely key. And while some guidance is already available, at the present moment, Islamic jurisprudence is basically very localized. Okay? Therefore, one way to overcome poverty eradication gaps is to focus on local needs, while at the same time, harnessing global philanthropy from donors who live in more affluent societies. And I think uh, your platform, Hasana, uh, is doing a great job in doing that. Thank you, sir. Yes, as, as you mentioned, Hasana was launched uh, a couple of years ago, um, and uh, the last year has been running through uh, what they call a beta phase to try and test the platform. Uh, it's had some, some successes, but I think the objective now is to generate more awareness uh, as a trusted tool to use this as a digital platform, but as a trusted tool to deploy yeah. and transfer um, philanthropic capital and ultimately, yeah. of course, Islamic arms giving through zakat and sadaqah. Yeah. So yes. hopefully it will gain uh, traction uh, in the months and years to come. And Inshallah. I would also uh, thank, thank you, Your Royal Highness. Yeah. You know, one of the key factors, of course, that led to the establishment um, of the Center for Strategic Philanthropy at Cambridge and also 
or recently, as I mentioned, the Strategic Philanthropy Initiative at NYU in Abu Dhabi, has mm. been the rapid growth of the world's emerging economies and also the generational transitioning uh, transition yeah. that's happening at this moment in time with trillions of dollars going to change hands. How yeah. do you think that these trends can be harnessed to create opportunities specifically for youth in finding new solutions to address our world's greatest challenges? The future belongs to the young. You know, and I think the youth must be given more voice. They must be given the skills and the knowledge to guide them through the years that they will be, when they will be policymakers, entrepreneurs, and, and, and so forth. And, and, and the older generation, people in our generation, will also need to come to terms with the impact of our decisions and actions on the destruction of the planet and the disasters and health crises that follow as a result. And you mentioned the emerging economies, and I, I think Asia, uh, particularly Southeast Asia, can take the initiative, I believe, to harness innovation and new knowledge to show leadership, in particularly in areas of sustainable development. What is needed is leadership to drive a new way of doing things and a groundswell of citizen advocacy, particularly among the youth, to demand that change. Your Royal Highness, Sultan Nazrin Shah, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to speak with me today and for everything that you've done and of course are continuing to do for Malaysia and for the world. This has been uh, an honor for me personally uh, and of course an important contribution to the work of the Centers uh, for Strategic Philanthropy at Cambridge and uh, NYU Abu Dhabi. So thank you again, sir, and I wish you and your family uh, the very best always and look forward to visiting you uh, again uh, in KL uh, soon, inshallah. Thank you very much for having me, Bada, and I look forward to our next meeting, inshallah. Thank you, Thank sir. Bye-bye.